Hi, I'm Jody of Jody Sewing Studio, and I want to welcome you to my studio in beautiful Tinnake Springs, Alaska, which is about 60 miles from Juneau, Alaska. And um, anyway, I want to talk to you today about um, a panel um, that I uh, designed for Northcott Fabrics. Uh, the name of it is Quilts and Cuspics Alaskan Doll, and Barbara Lavallee's artwork was a applied to the doll by the team at Northcott Fabrics and I mean I did the, the pattern work and the instructions and the test stitching out etc and, and stuff like that and it's just really a, a very fun collaborative project so um, so this video is designed to help you learn how to sew this together and be very successful with it I'll be showing you some tips and some tricks that I find useful in sewing projects like this. So this is our doll um, with a long hair added to it. And then you can also uh, make a short haired version and not add the yarn to it. So it could be a little boy doll, be a little girl doll. Um, Cuspics are really fun garments that are um, popular in Alaska and the peoples of uh, the indigenous peoples up north have worn them for many years. Um, they made them out of fabrics that they received from traders and um, it's also a garment that is worn uh, across the northern portions of Canada and, and I've heard other countries too. It's basically a hoodie, kind of like a sweatshirt, made out of a woven cotton fabric and so many years ago, you know, people made cuspics out, out of what was available to them and so now we have so many beautiful fabrics that we can make cuspics out of. It's just, you know, uh, the, sky's, the sky's the limit. And, and I'm actually wearing one. And this um, pattern, I, I used a pattern, and it's the Friday's Cuspic pattern from Jody Sewing Studio. And there are people that still make them without using patterns. And I have to admit, most of the sewing I prefer to do for myself, I, I don't want to use a pattern. But um, patterns are kind of where we are in this day and age. So um, anyhow, so this is the doll um, wearing the uh, cuspic pattern uh, for the 18 inch doll. And um, so I said I'm wearing the cuspic made from that pattern. But anyhow, and then I made an edit in my pattern. So for those of you ac across the state of Alaska that have been using this pattern for years, um, I've added the instructions for the shorter, uh, just pullover version, um, which men and women alike wear so anyway so that's what this looks like I'm gonna just kind of set that out of the way and I would like for us to focus on the actual panel for a few minutes so if you'll turn your attention to my cutting table it's in um, it's, it's titled boys and girls work cuss books and to complete the doll you need one panel six ounces of fiber fill stuffing one skein of black yarn if you're wanting to make long hair um, and you can experiment with different yarns on this. Um, and then a Jody Sewing Studio cuspic pattern for the 18 inch doll or cuspic top and pant for the 18 inch doll. So I went ahead and added the, the top to this particular pattern. So you just need to buy one pattern. And the pant is a free download on my sewingshouldbefun.com website. And there is another video that shows you how to make those pants. They're really super simple. The general instructions are right here. And, um, and it's, you know, anytime you're sewing with a pattern, it's really important to read through the instructions. Um, you're gonna be seam ripping a lot less if you do. So the general instructions basically tell you that all seam allowances are a quarter of an inch and they're already included in the drawing. So the seam allowances are right here, not out, not here. This is not my sewing line. This is gonna be my cutting line. I was very intentional about that. I've sewn cut and sew panels before and I can't stand it when the little stitch lines from the printing sh shows on it. So as I worked with the amazing art director at Northcott Fabrics, I told her that I wanted the, the artwork to go all the way to the cutting edge. That way, when the doll is completely sewn, you're not seeing those little, uh, little black dashed lines. So no matter how good your sewing is, your doll can still come out looking fabulous. So anyway, so that's why it's that way. So it's important that you realize that. 
I recommend using a size 8012 Microtex needle. Microtex needles are very sharp and they are designed for using with 100% cotton fabric. Um, I recommend a three ply 50 weight thread. So some 50 weight threads are two ply and others are three ply. Most of your, um, most of your threads are three ply. Orophil um, is known for its two ply thread, which is fabulous for piecing quilts. I, d I don't recommend it for something that you're gonna be stuffing though. So use a three ply 50 weight thread. I'm gonna be using Metrazine. It's a Mettler product that I really like. Um, but there are other products out there, Guterman, um, you know, just whatever. Um, set your machine stitch length to a smaller stitch length to navigating around really small curves. And it's actually really hard to do that if your stitch is too long. Um, do not trim the seams down. Instead, we're going to clip the next seams right in here. And I will be demonstrating all that. And then you're going to be um, using pinking shears. Pinking shears are an absolute favorite tool of mine in the sewing room for many reasons. And you're gonna see how I use these. Um, I, I love them. Anyway, so when we're wor working with curves, um, pinking shears behave like a clip, but um, they also protect your fabric from fraying. And if you can imagine when this gets clipped in, you're trying to stuff all that in when you turn it. The zigzagged edge helps that to stuff in neater and you have a rounder edge when you're done. You will see this in the sewing project process. So um, we're going to be doing that. The doll will be sewn completely prior to stuffing. That is really important. I cannot emphasize that enough. I mean, I know that a lot of you are going to think, oh, I'm just going to make the legs. I'm going to stuff them and then I'm going to attach them to the doll. Trust me on this. Um, if you want to do it the hard way, you know, that's up to you, but you're going to find that it's going to be very difficult to insert these legs in the body and then effect efficiently sew the body together. So I'm just going to ask that you trust me on that one. And I promise you this technique is going to be really easy to do. Um, so let me see. Each arm and leg is marked with, I'm, I'm going over these instructions in order for you just to make it better for you in the long run. They're marked with a, a section that says leave open for stuffing right there. Okay. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use that. And so that's marked with asterisks and, um, and then the pattern pieces are also marked with letters A, B, C, and D. And that's mainly to help um, people that um, have very limited experience sewing. Um, the A's, for example, are going to be up to the shoulders. You're not putting the arm on like that. And I've, I've seen this done, by the way. So that's just, and this, the A here actually works on the B side. But when you're drafting a pattern, you kind of have to be specific with the um, instructions. So the arm gets sewn in like that and then turned out like that, if that makes sense. So why do I have C and C, C and C, D and D, D and D? Because when this is sewn together, the toes need to be pointing in the same direction as the nose, right? Nose and toes. And so the leg's going to be folded like that, okay? It's going to be sewn in like that and come out like that. So that's why. And this, I know, can be a little puzzling to uh, someone initially. So you have a right leg and a left leg. Okay. Then the actual step-by-step -step instructions are on the bottom, and um, you know, and it and they're they're pretty straightforward. And so I'm not going to read these to you. I'm just going to actually do it, and you're going to watch. And I do want to discuss a tool or two. Um, I like to use good quality, really sharp pins, and not real large pins uh, for something like this. So I I don't like a long pin for something like this. Um, a bodkin, this is a real inexpensive tool. It, um, this one I believe is made by Jits, but what I like about it is this little round tip is really handy when we're turning the, um, the thumb and the, the, the hands and the toes and the, the head part. So turning is a, a phrase that we use in sewing, which basically means after you sew something, 
right sides together, you turn it right side out. So that's what the turning is. And then when you're turning it, you have to really smooth that out really good. So you're going to see me use this tool. And so I kind of wanted to let you know ahead of time what it is. I also recommend that you keep a seam ripper on hand. Um, and it's worth the investment to, you know, go to your independent fabric store and buy a really good quality one. Um, the little dime store seam rippers have, a, they just, they're really dull. And when you're trying to rip seams, often you tear your fabric. Um, and a good one is sharp. It's sharp enough to cut your fabric, but it's sharp enough that you can easily break seams if you need to. So I do recommend really good tools. You'll need some thread snips and some regular scissors. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to cut this apart. I'm going to suggest that with scissors, you separate this along here and here. And then you've got this set of instructions ready for you. And then these are the illustrations for these instructions down here. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these scraps yet, but I kind of want to make them into something. I think it'd be really fun. But anyway, so these are the illustrated instructions for you. And then you need to cut this part off here. And then I'm going to recommend... And I highly recommend this. I've, I've tried this panel both ways and, and this is so much easier. I am actually cutting, I'm, I'm cutting this up into five smaller panels. So a panel that has the doll front and the doll back, a panel that has the doll left and right arms. So one here, one here, and the same with this. So I'm going to pretend like I've got all that cut up and I'm going to fold this and I'm going to get it out of the way. And so the next thing I would like to do is show you what we do next. The first time I uh, did this, I kind of went to autopilot and I started cutting out the, the whole doll. And it's like, what was I thinking? And it's actually a lot harder to sew it together that way. And I'll, I'll describe that when we get to the, the sewing machine. So if you keep your panel like this, and um, so far the sample panels that Northcott has sent me have been, I mean, just printed beautifully. Um, by the way, I, I do need to say, please don't pre-wash your panels. Um, if you have allergies to chemicals on fabric and have to wash your panel, wash it, but then hang it to dry. Um, don't, the reason why you don't want to pre-wash and dry uh, panels is fabric is a very complicated medium to actually sew on. And so the, fabric, when the sizing is all washed off of it and it shrinks, the design can shrink and it could actually distort it a little bit, which makes it a lot harder to sew. That's why when you buy panels for quilts and you read instructions for the quilts using panels, they tell you not to wash the panel because it can actually really, your rectangle be, can become a parallelogram. So I highly advise that you don't, that, that you don't do that. Okay. Um, this panel um, has printed out absolutely beautifully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these right sides together. And I can actually see through the fabric enough. And if you have a light board, you can do this through a light board. Or you can uh, open, you can hold it up against the window. And I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to put two pins perpendicular right where my asterisks are. And that is to remind me to not sew there. And if you're someone that needs lots of reminders, take another pen, maybe a different one. When I teach uh, teenagers how to sew and kids how to sew, they love to use different colored pens to kind of mark things and they have a lot of fun with that. So that right there, these pens are actually crossing the perimeter of the drawing. So the rest of my pens are just gonna hold this together. like this. And this is going to actually be ready to sew. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in just a couple of minutes. Same thing here. And again, if you can't see, you just uh, hold it up to a window or if you have a little light, a light board, they're wonderful. I mean, I have one in my studio out here. I just didn't think to plug it in to show you what I was talking about. They're really great for tracing designs for um, if you're going to do some thread 
painting or they're good for tracing patterns if you need to do that sort of thing and they're good for paper piecing for those of you quilters out there that love to paper piece and they're good for small projects like this so as you can see I'm anchoring I'm anchoring this all down with pins so that my fabric doesn't walk on me while I'm actually sewing okay and I would do that with both legs and both arms and this just gets set aside and we're going to deal with this one later so now we're going to walk over to the sewing machine we're going to get it set up for sewing okay so here we are at the machine and I want to talk to you about something that might be available for your machine most machines um, come with the option to add a straight stitch plate to it and this is the stitch plate and the stitch plate actually has this is where the needle goes right here okay so on this stitch plate this is set up for zigzag and everything else um, my needle goes through here my needle goes through here um, this is for cording and that's a whole other thing that we're not going to get into but anyway so my, my needle goes through there these plates insert into the machine like this my feed dogs come through this part of the plate okay when you're working with really small projects or you're piecing quilts and you're just straight stitching only it's actually a really good idea to use a straight stitch plate if you have one it's not required but your stitches are um, usually come out better especially when you're having to turn tight curves and tight corners so I'm gonna do that and I'm actually sewing on a Bernina sewing machine and so I can tell my sewing machine um, which stitch plate I have in it and if I try to to change to a zigzag stitch it won't let me hit metal so I actually like that feature especially if I'm doing something like this where I can get easily distracted so the first step actually tells you to stitch the arms and to um, trim them and then to uh, pink the curves or to clip your curves so I'm going to go into straight stitch mode and I'm going to bring my stitches down to the length of two I already have my sewing machine threaded with a, a white uh, polyester 50 weight thread and 50 weight thread is generally your all-purpose thread um, and, and just so you know thread weights matter um, with needles so if you are using a heavy thread and sometimes someone would think well this is a doll kids are gonna play rough with it they're gonna overstuff it and they're gonna think I'm gonna get a really thick thread well if, if you put a thick thread in a 12 weight a size 12 needle you're gonna skip stitches so that's why my instructions are as specific as they are so we're going to do a quarter inch seam and we're going to start by back stitching and we're going to stitch to the asterisk and then we're going to back stitch and then i'm going to cut my thread and then i'm going to come start at the second asterisk come down okay now as i come to the curve i want to i want to show you something if i had this all completely cut which I do have a set that's completely cut I don't know what I did with it right now it's actually a lot harder to navigate these curves and if you'll notice I'm able to hold on to all this extra fabric because I've left the fabric there to actually work with occasionally I will lift my um, press your foot to get it out of the way but do you see how I'm how much easier it is to do this curve because I actually have something to hold on to not only that you saved yourself anywhere from a half hour to an hour of time of cutting all those little pieces out Okay, so 
it's hard to see with my white thread. So I actually did a sample with gray thread. So you can see the stitching a little bit better. If you can see that. So my next step now is to pull my pins out. And then you're gonna cut along the cutting lines and then you're gonna pink those edges. You don't need to pink the rest of it. Pinking shears need to be used on the curved edges, okay? So I'm gonna get a pair of scissors. So you're gonna take a pair of scissors and you are literally just going to cut right on that cutting line. And I, I won't do that one for right now. Just want to be able to show you how I come back and use my pinking shears. So actually, before I do the pinking shears, I'm going to clip right to the point without sewing through it, cutting through it. If you accidentally cut through that, that little pivot in there, then you do need to come back and repair it by sewing about an inch here, pivot again, and then go about halfway to the, the thumb to secure that. And then for the thumb, I'm just gonna come around carefully. Notice that I'm actually keeping my scissors still and I'm, I'm moving my fabric. It's a much easier way to do this. So now I have you know, two little arms. Another tip I want to give you is before these arms get turned for sewing for later, it's actually uh, easier to do the hand stitching later if you press the opening seam open and you can do that with your fingernail like that. And then that way when when you uh, go to actually sew this, it's just a lot easier to sew. So that's a little tip also that I would like to leave with you. So the next step tells you to go on to the legs and we are doing the exact same thing with the legs. So um, we're gonna start, I have everything pinned all the way around and then my pins are crossing the fabric where I don't wanna actually sew. So again, my stitches are set to a length of two and I back stitch. And the reason I'm leaving all this fabric here is so that I have something to hold on to that makes this easier to navigate. So this is the exact same thing that you did with the uh, arms. And typically I would just kind of skip this and show you what I've done, but review is kind of worth its weight in gold actually. So, and then here I am at the curves again. In fact, I'm gonna get some of these pins out of the way and I'm just sewing slow to get around my curve. And then I'm gonna come up to this first asterisk and backstitch. Then I'm going to start at the second asterisk. Again, I'm sewing a quarter of an inch in and back stitch at the top and then cut my thread. And again, just like I did on the um, arm, I'm going to use regular fabric shears and I can't find my favorite ones right now. I don't know what I did with them. 
just cut along the cutting line. If you um, need your C's and your D's still written up at the top of your uh, legs and A's and B's on your arms, you can just take a pencil and write that in right at the top and that's fine. So I've got some concave curves and convex curves here and I'm going to deal with all, of, I'm going to address both concave and convex curves with my pinking shears. And again, if you'll notice, I'm actually not moving my scissors. I'm moving my, my, my fabric. There we go. So I have my little legs cut. And in the event you don't remember that little trick I showed you with the arm, finger press that seam open. And then when you go to um, turn and stuff it later, it just makes it a lot easier to find where you're supposed to actually sew that. Okay, so after I sew my legs, I'm actually gonna be turning them right side out. So to do that, same with my arms. So this is what I'm aiming for right here. Two arms and two legs. And this is where this tool becomes in super handy. So I'm going to take my, my uh, first arm. I'm just going to... I love the rounded edge in this because it will not damage uh, my fabric at all. And it's long. So then I just kind of rock it in there push my thumb through and now I've got one arm And again, I'm just, I'm just not going to damage anything that way. And you can see here where I had um, kind of creased that, which is going to make it easier to sew later on. And this one I didn't crease because of, well, because of how I do my demonstrations. So. Yeah. But, so I have my arms and same thing with my legs. I'm going to take that toe, I'm going to push it through. Of course I'm going to push it through. If I can't get to it, I'm going to go in through here. There we go. So get that through, put my bodkin in. So a uh, chopstick works pretty good, especially if it's a smooth chopstick, if you have something like that lying around. Um, don't use a pencil. Uh, the pencil tip can actually puncture your fabric. Um, sometimes the eraser side, as long as it has an eraser on it, can work if you, um, you just want something that's dull and kind of rounded. But again, these, like I said, these bodkins are not expensive. I think a couple of bucks at the most. Um, this is kind of a hard thing to see.
So if you remember my, uh, I have my A, B, C, D, um, my legs are going to actually, they're actually going to be like that. So that's just something you need to be aware of when you're actually attaching them to the doll. And so the next step is to attach these to the doll. So this is how we're going to do that. In fact, I'd like to move over to the cutting table. Okay, so we're back at the cutting table. And I'm going to leave the doll like this too. I'm not going to cut the doll apart. And I'm, I'm going to pin these to the front. Um, so I'm going to line my leg up with the um, a little bit more than a quarter inch in from the hip there. And I'm going to pin this in place. We're going to go back and baste it in a couple of minutes. And when we baste it, we're actually going to sew all the way across the bottom. That gives you a hand stitching line too. Please make sure the toes are pointing to the nose. And so I have a lot of grandchildren. I've sewn with kids a lot. I taught sewing for 20 years in public school systems, which I was pretty fortunate to be able to do that actually. And um, kit, dolls need to be user friendly. And so I intentionally made these legs kind of thin enough so there's a gap. They're easier to dress if you're making pants for your doll. So that, that's my reason for that, just, just in case you want to know. So the arm has to come down right here. And what I want you to imagine is my seam's going to come right there and pivot okay so and you need to line that up kind of almost with that point there you're just going to have a better chance of not accidentally sewing the top of the arm when you're doing the shoulder seam and actually kind of neatly fold these out of the way I'm even going to pin them, putting a bigger flat pin in there right now. just want to be really careful because um, you don't want to stab yourself with those pins. I want to make sure that my legs are not going to be in my way when I sew my seam. This is why we don't stuff the legs first, if you can imagine. Okay, then I'm going to take this other arm. And pin it down. And the arms are going to be folded in two. And I am going to put a, a larger pin in there. And th this is going to be left open here. So I'm placing these pins in such a way, actually let me get a heavy duty pin. Pins come in different weights and sizes too. Here. Heavier one. So if you look at my pin cushions, there's a wide variety of pins in all my pin cushions, but I sew on just about everything. So, so now what I need to do is go back to the machine and I need to baste this and then get these pins out of the way. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're back with the machine and I'm just gonna do a quarter inch seam, removing my pins as I sew. Don't get into the habit of sewing over pins. It's very bad for your sewing machine. I own a fabric store and sell sewing machines. And I will tell you this, I, I depend heavily on my sewing machine uh, technicians, mechanics, whatever, to advise us on how to take care of the sewing machines. But you'll see people sewing over pins all the time, and it's not a good idea. OK, 
can cause damage. So now I'm going to sew both arms down. And I'm kind of moving my pins as I... And really I should do that just inside the quarter inch. I'm kind of doing it right on the quarter inch. But you're going to be a lot more accurate in your work if you... And we call this stay stitching, actually, when you... This, the purpose of the, the stitching is to keep something staying in place. This is pretty logical why it's called stay stitching. Okay. So that's where we are with that. So the next step is going to be to fold this over and actually pin it together and get it ready for sewing. And I've done that with this particular sample and I also sewed with gray thread so that you can see, see a little bit better, you know, what I did. Now I'm going to sew from this side so that I can see where my basting stitches are. That way I can make sure I'm sewing kind of over them. So um, I'm also going to start, start on one side. I actually need to start a little further in. Hold on. Back stitch. Again, my stitches are at two. I can feel in here to make sure. that I'm not sewing on my legs and stuff. I also gave this doll a waistline because when you're dressing dolls and playing with them, you know, it's hard to give them a derriere. <laughs> but if I give them a waistline, if you make skirts and um, pants for them, the clothes stays on them. So that's why they have a, a waistline. Again, I'm thinking about, you know, children playing with these dolls. There's a lot of doll pattern, garment patterns out there for um, 18 inch dolls and almost all those patterns, the clothes would fit these dolls. Okay, so now we're coming to that part, the neck, which is the tightest curve in the whole project. So I'm sewing very slow. I'm going to raise my presser foot every once in a while just to make it a little bit easier. This is why I didn't cut all the extra off. It gives me something to hold on to. You can use a quarter inch patchwork foot, but I choose not to. The reason I'm using a clear presser foot um, and a regular presser foot is because then I have really good engagement with my feed dogs. So the feed dogs on your sewing machine are what actually grab your fabric and bring it forward. So, or forward into the project actually brings it away from you. But it's very important that um, your fabric is feeding really well. So if I use a clear foot, I can see where I'm sewing. And most sewing machine brands have clear feet available. It's not a must. It's just the reason I'm using what I'm using. So again, I'm raising my presser foot just a little bit. I actually have a knee lift for this machine, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> so if you own a machine that has a knee lift, you can just slightly lift it to, not while you're sewing, but to reposition your work. And it's a real handy thing to do in a project like this. Okay, so coming over the second arm. 
And I, again, I can feel where my uh, arms and legs are. Okay, now I'm going to show you something that I do not have illustrated at all in the instructions because this is a very difficult thing to illustrate in the instructions, but it's a little tip. If you want to have a really nice corner um, when you turn this, I'm going to go ahead and trim this first. You don't have to do it this way, but I think you will find it's a really cool thing to know how to do. I'm going to fold my seam and I'm going to sew to about there. I don't want to leave the whole bottom open. It makes it harder to close when, um, when it's stuffed. So again, that quarter inch seam on the bottom. And I'm going to sew about half the leg back stitch. And then I'm going to fold this other one forward too. And I'll be able to show you more what that looks like in a couple of seconds. It just gives me a, a nice turn. You know, it's not, it's not like critical, but it gives you a really nice turn. When I turn this, the, the corner of the doll will look really kind of cool. I'm going to remove my pins. I'm going to, um, I actually use the pinking shears to do some of this. You can cut with regular scissors first, but I've got my curves here and here. And I want you to notice where I'm actually cutting. So if you look at this, I mean, I'm cutting close to this. So the point of my zigzag is towards that cutting line. I don't want to cut right up against my uh, seam, but I do need to be, you know, relatively close to it. Then I'm just going to go ahead and take the regular scissors and come around. Come up. Okay, if you don't have pinking shears, you would actually, let me just show you this, you'd actually come through, you would just cut cut like that and then you would come in and clip those curves I'm trying to see which side you might be able to see that better and you still clip the curves even if you have pinking shears but use the tips of your scissors never use uh, the further further inside the blade this is the weakest part of the doll when you're when you're you know making dolls it's one of the reasons why i like to use a really small stitch it just makes it a lot stronger here i'm not clipping the straight edges that just uh, weakens the seam you know um, and then the concave edge if you don't i mean the convex edge if you don't have pinking shears i would just kind of leave it alone you can clip it, but it ends up making it look um, kind of geometric. Pinking shears really do work better here. Now I've heard, but I don't know if this is true, that you can sharpen pinking shears by uh, layering foil um, 
heavy duty foil, six layers of it, and then just keep cutting until it files all the edges sharp again. I haven't tried it. Many people have pinking shears that are old, that have been sitting at home, that have not been used for fabric. They've been used on paper and it ruins them to use them on paper. But that's worth trying. If you don't have pinking shears, I would probably leave it unclipped, but usually you notch, which means you're notching out little pieces for a convex curve, and then you clip in a concave curve. So we just need to remove the bottom part. And our doll is ready to turn. So I'm going to reach in. This one I had uh, removed those pins from. I didn't have the... Actually, no, I do have one pin left in there. Reach in, pull your pins out before you stab yourself and get blood on everything. <laughs> pull your pins out and uh, pull the uh, legs through. arms through and push the head through <laughs> take my handy bodkin to help me get my head pulled out. So let's move over to the cutting table because I think you can see it better. So I'm just using that rounded edge of this bodkin. It's not going to damage my seams. I just love this tool. In fact, fabric shop owners that are carrying this fabric panel um, get this with, with the panel. I mean, it's just a really great tool. I think, I, again, I think it's a Dritz product. I don't remember, but there's her doll. And so she's ready to stuff now, she or he. You can make, her, make it a little boy, make it a little girl. This is the back of the doll. Okay, and then the next thing we just need to do is stuff and, and sew, sew her shut. And then if you want to give her long hair, I'll show you how to make the long hair. The next thing I would like to talk about is actually stuffing your doll. So when you're ready to stuff your doll, the bodkin is really helpful again. And if you remember, uh, you used the round tip of the bodkin to to go ahead and kind of push out the hands and the feet and the head. And when you're stuffing the doll, you always want to stuff the, the head and the torso first, okay? And then sometimes I use my bodkin to help push it in there. Uh, chopstick is a really good tool for using the stuffing. I tend to buy stuffing in a box and it's really compacted. And when that's the case, you often have to kind of pull it apart a little bit before, before you actually start putting it in so that things aren't too lumpy. So we're going to go all the way up to the head first and get as much stuffing in there as we can. And um, the way I determined how much stuffing you actually need for this doll is I made a doll and then I weighed it. And so it took about six ounces. It weighed six ounces. So six ounces of stuffing works really good. So when you buy your stuffing um, or if you are a shop owner and you're wanting to maybe have a class on making dolls and you want to kit it with stuffing six ounces of stuffing proved to be sufficient if I was making a kit I'd probably I don't know maybe put eight ounces in there because you'd rather have more than than not enough and anyway so you keep stuffing that until you have a really tight 
start torso. I mean, you want the torso to be really firm. And then when you go to stuff the arms and the legs, you always stuff um, the, the toes and the fingertips first. And you want to use a bodkin or you want to use um, a chopstick to help get that all the way in there. And so I'm, this one I still need to continue stuffing the head. I don't think I need to uh, show you completely how to do that. But I will say this. I'm going to exaggerate here for a minute. If you don't get enough stuffing in the head and neck, your, your doll eventually is just going to be doing this number on you. So it, you really do need to put a lot of stuffing in there. If you're going to teach a class like to young people maybe how to do this, then um, you want I what I do when I teach, um, I always have people show me their progress um, and get my approval before they move on to the next step. And so in a, in a doll, I would have them show me the head part first. Because once you stuff the head and you think you have enough in it and you start doing the rest of the torso, you can end up with a limp neck. And most of you that have been sewing for a while, this is a total non-issue for you. But, um, you know, I'm hoping this little project um, encourages people new to sewing to kind of have fun with it. The next video is going to be on how to make the cusp books for these dolls. So anyway, I'm not going to continue stuffing that. I think you've got the point. But this is what it's going to look like after it's stuffed. So you can, you know, see really clearly there that, you know, he or she has a, a lot of stuff in the body. And you stuff the body first. And then you stuff the arms and the legs. And then after that, you hand sew it shut. And, um, and then from there, you put the hair on. So... When I hand sewed this one, and I have, haven't finished sewing her hair down actually, she's been my little sample, but you can see that my stitches are just really tiny little whip stitches, um, but they're really strong. I did invisible stitches here, but um, one of the things I do when I make samples for something like this, I'm kind of testing what I think works best. The whip stitch actually just works a lot better on um, the seam that seams that have a lot of stuffing in them. The invisible stitch is kind of great because it's hard to see, but whip stitch is a little stronger, I think. So that's what I would recommend. Double your thread. Put the thread conditioner on it. Anyway, on here, I uh, hand sewed that down really good. And then my next step on this one would be to hand stitch this down here to secure it. Secure it to the side of her head, you know. And then, um, then you can go from there. And then again, if you do give this to a child, you just need to kind of let them know, and children are very teachable, that this isn't the kind of hair that you can brush. But that's why when we designed the doll, we just went with a simple short hair. You don't have to put hair on it if you don't want to. And um, anyway... So I'm bringing this to the machine and I'm going to do a triple stitch. But I want to start um, with a regular stitch and go backwards to anchor it. And then I want to sew forwards. And then I'm going to do my, now I'm going to set it up for my, my uh, triple stitch here. So again, a triple stitch comes forward, backwards, forward, forward, backwards, forward, forward, backwards, forward. If you've seen my video on how to make the jeans for dolls, that's the, that's the stitch I use for top stitching to make it look like they have a side seam. Um, did 
just back stitched a little bit there I'm gonna raise my presser foot my needles in a down position and I'm just gonna turn this and I'm gonna come back over it again Using thread in the top and the bottom that matches the yarn, and, and I'm putting a black yarn on. So now I just want to get this super secure. So um, I'm going to come back a third time. I'm actually coming back immediately next to it. I'm going to cut my thread. I want you to see what I have there. So this actually starts kind of tearing away too, which is kind of cool. And I might want to add a little bit more yarn in here. It depends. I'm going to hold this onto a doll and see. And if you can't get it all off, you just, and, and water is not going to hurt the yarn. You use a little bit of water. You can use a very wet sponge if you want to. Um, I'm not going to do that right now for time's sake. And then you grab one of your dolls. Now I would, I would actually do my hand sewing prior to doing this. And then I would, I would line the part up at the top there. You know, and you can see what I'm doing there. And this is designed to, to be a braid. So I'm going to just use some larger pins to kind of anchor that down while I'm figuring out what I want to do with this. So you decide what look you want. You can have them there you could come a little further back here and have them right there you can have them up high you decide that first thing you need to do here though is you're going to hand stitch this in place and i would get some um, thread and maybe uh, put a, a thread strengthener on it kind of like let me see i like to use this product it's a thread conditioner and protectant Kind of makes your thread a little bit stronger and it keeps it from tangling when you're hand sewing. Beeswax does the same thing, but beeswax might show up in the, the black hair. I'm not, I'm not real sure. So this just gets hand sewn now. And then you finger comb it, decide where you're going to want to start your ponytail or your braid. And then what I did was I tied a string here and then I braided it. And what I would recommend, and I did not do this with mine, is after I did that, um, well actually, after I sewed it, I went in with a little hot glue and that just keeps it in place really well. But after you make your ponytail here, you really do need to consider anchoring that down by sewing it to the side of the face and again this is not something that I would probably do um, on the doll that's being played with by a young child um, although the beauty of it is it's very repairable I mean if they mess up the hair you just make a new a new wig for the doll but her her ponytail can be right there I can braid it or I can leave it leave it like this and you can do whatever you want to do and so there you go well, we're coming to the end of 
um, the process of making our doll. I really appreciate you hanging in this long with me. So we're going to take a look here at um, the dolls, and I just want to explain to you a little bit more about um, what how I addressed the hair. So the first doll that I had made, I, I, I asked, hand stitched her um, hair right here and you can go back and reinforce that with a little hot glue if you want. I did not because this is still kind of at my testing state. <laughs> Anyhow, um, and then I, what I would recommend doing is securing this with large hand stitches kind of where you can't see them because you don't want anything that's going to pull on and tear the, uh, the doll face. Okay. This doll, so the most recent one that I'm completing, I still haven't hand stitched it down. Normally, I would have you um, and I would actually s stitch all of the openings where we were stuffing prior to putting the hair on. Um, and then I would stitch my hair on. It's actually good to tie it out of the way while you're stitching it. Um, and I use a, usually use a curved needle. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, and also I recommend really good quality needles. Uh, trust me, uh, John James is a real good needle, um, but just a really good needle is so much easier to sew with than one that's not, not near as good. And it's hard to understand until you compare good needles to bad needles. But, but you're going to do kind of a hand stitch, back stitch to secure that in place. Then the next thing I did is I actually took a scrap of yarn and I tied real tight right here. So I took a piece about that long, tied real tight, and then I just start braiding it. And so with that, I just divide the yarns. Now I used 120 strands. You don't have to use that much. And uh, different yarns are, have different thicknesses. So you just decide, depends on what you have available to you. So, and as I braid this, I actually want the braid to be really tight. If you make this braid too bulky, it's gonna be hard to, to dress the doll. So I've already braided one side. And I just wanna make sure that this side is the same length braid. And again, I'm braiding it really tight so you can kind of see my braids. Then I'm going to take a scrap of yarn. Tie that really tight. The nice thing about yarn is once you knot it, it just doesn't come undone. I'm pretty okay at knotting stuff like this myself, but sometimes you need to have a second person put a finger in there for you. So I'm going to wrap it around the back and I'm going to tie it again because I just want to, pun intended, but be doubly sure that it's really strong or a nice, a nice tight knot. There we go. Okay, then I can decide what I want to do with the rest of this mane hand, uh, hanging off here. And I, I tend to like to cut it. So I've got my favorite shears in my hand right here. I'm just going to cut it off. You can leave it kind of wild and crazy too. You don't have to cut it off. You know, it's your doll. You get to do what you want to with it. And that's how I am choosing to do that particular doll. So um, again, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to go through this. And also there will be a, a slideshow at the sewingshouldbefun.com website. Just um, go to where the 18 inch doll cuss book stuff is and there'll be a, a, a PDF of a 
PowerPoint presentation reminding you of the steps. And it's got color photographs and it will help you um, put the doll together and you know, grab a bunch of friends, make them together, maybe teach a class, have some young people together to do it um, and enjoy. And I hope you watch my other um, uh, video on how to make the doll cuspets. That's coming up soon. Thank you. Bye.